Welcome to this session on waste disposal in Illinois. I am David Walters with the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency and hope that you find this session to be both informative and useful. The Illinois EPA was formed in 1970 by the passage of the Illinois Environmental Protection Act. It's made up of three major bureaus, the Bureau of Land, the Bureau of Water, and the Bureau of Air. The regulation for the disposal of waste is found within the Bureau of Land. The Illinois EPA works in conjunction with the U.S. EPA on a wide variety of environmental programs. U.S. EPA can provide oversight of state programs and can approve or disapprove of state regulations. The Bureau of Land's goals are to protect human health in the environment by ensuring that hazardous and solid waste are managed in a sound manner to reduce or control risk to human health in the environment. To meet those goals, one aspect of BOL's program is to ensure that municipal waste landfills are operated properly. In 2012, 40 landfills reported accepting almost 40 million gate cubic yards of municipal solid waste in Illinois. 43 landfills reported having remaining capacity estimated at almost 26 years. The most common waste disposal option is landfilling. But before a landfill can be built, it must obtain permission or siting from the local government authority. In most cases, that is the local county government or the local municipal government, wherever the facility might be located. The law spells out the process that officials must follow to approve or deny local siting. Local government siting applies to all pollution control facilities, not just landfills. A pollution control facility is any waste storage site, sanitary landfill, waste disposal site, waste transfer station, waste treatment facility, or waste incinerator. There are some exceptions to this, most notably tire facilities, landscape waste compost facilities, and some household hazardous waste collection facilities. The law specifies nine criteria to be used for evaluating a local siting decision. Included in those are is the facility necessary for the waste disposal needs of the area? Will public health, safety, and welfare be protected? Is the facility located to minimize the effects surrounding property values? Is the facility located outside the 100-year floodplain? Are traffic patterns designed to minimize impact on the existing traffic flow? And is the facility consistent with county solid waste management plans? Local governments must take into account all nine of these criteria before they can approve or deny a siting application. After siting is obtained from local governments, both brand new landfills and expansions to existing facilities must apply to the Illinois EPA for permitting. In 1991, the federal government enacted amendments to Subtitle D of the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, better known as RICRA, that place strict new regulations on landfill design and operation, including location restrictions, liner requirements, leachate collection and removal systems, operating practices, groundwater monitoring requirements, closure and post-closure care requirements, corrective action provisions, and financial assurance. Landfills that were operating at that time were forced to comply with the new regulations or closed in a prescribed manner. As we will see later, many facilities closed. Once an owner or operator can show compliance with local siting, he or she must apply for a permit to develop a new facility or an expansion to an existing facility. The developmental permit, as it is known, must show that the design and location of the landfill will meet the RICRA requirements. After the facility is built, they must obtain an operating permit before receiving any waste. Any changes to the operation or facility must be approved through a permit modification. The number of Illinois landfills has decreased over the years. In 1987, there were 146 landfills actively accepting waste. In 1991, there were 110. Then, after the RICRA Subtitle D regulations were passed, you can see that by 1997, there were only 56 operating facilities. Today, we only have 40 landfills that accept waste. At the same time, the volumes of waste have also decreased. There are many factors 
influencing how much waste is produced, but during this period, many new recycling, reuse, and composting programs have been established, and businesses have become more conscious of disposal costs and made strides to recycle more. In addition, several items have been banned from Illinois landfills. Landscape waste was banned in 1991. Liquid motor oil has been banned. Lead acid batteries are banned from landfill disposal. Whole tires, white goods, known as refrigerators, washers, dryers, and electronic devices were banned in, from landfills starting in 2012. That includes, that includes a list of 17 items, most notably computers, printers, monitors, and televisions. Enforcing environmental regulations and laws is an integral part of the Illinois EPA's plan to protect human health and the environment. The agency works to ensure compliance with environmental regulations and when warranted will take civil or criminal enforcement actions. There are seven regional offices located throughout Illinois and in addition to inspecting waste management facilities such as landfills, transfer stations, and compost facilities, performs inspections on waste generators, open our illegal dumps and waste transporters. The Illinois EPA also delegates its inspection authority to 18 counties and the city of Chicago. Delegation agreements with those entities authorize them to conduct many of the duties that would otherwise have to be performed by the agency field office. Thousands of inspections are performed each year and the efforts at the local level stimulate the regulated community to comply with environmental regulations. When issues of non-compliance are found, the agency will send violation notices to the offending party. Illinois law allows for a process where an entity has the opportunity to resolve the non-compliance before triggering enforcement. The violator will be offered the opportunity to come back into compliance with the regulations through a compliance commitment agreement. If compliance is not or cannot be achieved in the matter, it will be referred to the Illinois Attorney General for formal enforcement and legal proceedings. It is important to note that landfill owners and operators are not just responsible for the facility during its active life, but must make provisions for its proper closure and post-closure care for 30 years from the date of closing. This includes groundwater monitoring, erosion control, and methane gas control. From the first day of operation, owners must provide proof of set-aside funds that will pay for the required closure and post-closure care activities and any corrective, corrective action that might become necessary due to release of contaminants into the surrounding environment. Approved financial assurance mechanisms include trust funds, performance bonds, letters of credit, our insurance. In addition to the Illinois Environmental Protection Act, the Illinois Solid Waste Management Act was passed in 1986. It did several things, but most importantly, it placed a waste management hierarchy on how waste should be handled within Illinois. The first option, most preferable option, is volume reduction at the source, moving down to recycling and reuse, and then combustion with energy recovery, combustion with volume reduction, and finally, as a last resort, landfill. The Illinois Solid Waste Management Act also authorized the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity to issue grants and loans to help increase the amount of materials recycled throughout the state. It requires the Illinois EPA to produce an annual landfill capacity report, and it placed fees on waste placed in Illinois landfills. It's those fees that are used to support the grants and loans and the development of the Illinois Landfill Capacity Report each year. The Illinois EPA also coordinates other waste management programs. These include household hazardous waste collections where we invite residents to bring any products from their homes that could be considered hazardous. The Illinois EPA works with a hazardous waste contractor to ensure that all waste collected are disposed of in environmentally friendly ways. The most common items collected at these events are paint, motor oil, insecticides, and household cleaners. The agency also conducts educational school waste collections 
where we utilize a hazardous waste disposal firm to clean out old chemicals from high school chemical labs. And finally, we do a Partners for Waste Paint Solutions program where retailers or local governments collect unwanted paint from residents and recycle or reuse that paint. While landfilling is the most common option for waste disposal in Illinois, an option is also composting. As previously mentioned, landscape waste were banned from Illinois landfills in 1991. As a result, numerous landscape waste composting facilities have been permitted around the state. Composting of leaves, grass clippings, and other landscape waste materials is useful for the conversion of organic material into beneficial soil amendments. Recent changes to Illinois law have facilitated the composting of food scraps at these landscape compost facilities. Landscape waste can also be accepted by farmers for application to farm fields. A new and emerging option is anaerobic digestion of organic waste. Anaerobic digestion of food scraps, manures, landscape waste, and municipal sewage sludge is a process by which microorganisms break down the waste in an enclosed vessel in the absence of oxygen. The process produces both useful compost and a biogas consisting of methane and carbon dioxide. The gas can be burned to produce electricity, burned as a fuel in a furnace, or cleaned and used as a replacement for natural gas. And while waste energy facilities are more common in other states and around the world, there are currently no operating units in Illinois. Waste energy facilities incinerate waste under very strict environmental regulations to produce energy. And finally today, here are some web pages from the Illinois EPA on the landfill capacity reports, process for landfill permitting, and the local siting of pollution control facilities. Again, my name is David Walters. I'm manager of the Waste Reduction and Compliance section with the Illinois EPA. If you'd like to get in contact with me, my email address is david.walters at illinois.gov and my direct telephone line is 217-782-9261.